We've already taken a look at three of AMD's new Ryzen 7000 series processors. So next up is the Ryzen 9 7900X, that's the 12 core. And in this one, we've got comparison data from its two main competitors, the Core i9-13900K and the Core i7-13700K to help us in our assessment of the chip. Coming in at around £560 currently in the UK, the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X sits very much in its own zone when it comes to pricing. It's around £90 more expensive than the Core i7-13700K and around £90 cheaper than the Core i9-13900K. And compared to AMD's own lineup, the 7900X is around £200 cheaper than the 7950X flagship or £130 more than the Ryzen 7 7700X that sits below it in the lineup. So what does this 12 core Zen 4 chip have to offer? And with a very clear price zone being occupied, can this work out to be a sensible purchase option on AMD's new feature-rich AM5 platform? Let's take a closer look. We've already taken a good closer look at AMD's new Zen 4 architecture and the AM5 platform, so make sure you check out some of our previous CPU reviews and the motherboard reviews, both on the YouTube channel and on the KitGuru website. There's more information over there. With that brief introduction done though, let's take a closer look at some of the details of this processor, shall we? Ryzen 9 7900X has 12 cores and 24 threads with 76 megabytes of total cache, 64 megs of which is level 3. Base clock of the new TSMC 5 nanometer fabbed chip is 4.7 gigahertz, and the maximum boost clock is a lofty 5.6 gigahertz under AMD's Precision Boost 2 algorithm. The 7900X's TDP is 170 watts, and that means that it'll get 230 watts, or up to 230 watts, of package power delivered, just like the Ryzen 9 7950X flagship. So that's more than some of the lower down chips in the rank, which are 105 watt TDP. And of course, being a 170 watt or 230 watt delivered part, there's no boxed cooler, and that's a sensible decision in my opinion. You're probably going to want a good cooler for this chip. There is the integrated RDNA 2 iGPU with actually decent performance capabilities and solid media consumption support, and that's good to see. In the UK, the Ryzen 9 7900X is about £560 currently. Of course, it runs on AMD's PCIe Gen 5 capable AM5 platform, so it'll also need to be used alongside a new motherboard and DDR5 memory. Make sure you get your wallet ready to be uh, given a pound in if you're upgrading from the AM4 or previous gen Intel platforms. And key to highlight in this comparison is that the Intel competitors will also need a modern motherboard, many of which support PCIe Gen 5. Yes, those Intel chips can also run on cheaper DDR4 capable boards, but if you're spending somewhere in the region of £500 plus on a processor, we think, plus you need a new motherboard, we think going for DDR5 is probably a sensible option at this point when we're talking high end chips realistically. But let us know what you think on that point. Would you actually buy one of these £500 plus? chips and want to run it with DDR4. Obviously you can't do that with AMD, you can with the Intel competitor. But yeah, I'm rambling at this point, so <laughs> let us know what you think in the comment section down below. And let's jump into the test system and some of the performance numbers. We will be pissing the new AMD Ryzen 7000 series processor against their logical competitors from Ryzen 5000 series and Intel 12th and 13th gen. Both DDR5 platforms use 32 gigabyte 6000 megahertz sets from G-Skills Trident Z5 range, though the timings differ slightly with the AMD Expo kit run at 30, 38, 38, 96 versus the Intel XMP set at 36, 36, 36, 96 but this is pretty close between the two sets. The new AMD processors are tested on Gigabyte's X670E Aorus Master Motherboard, featuring the BIOS revision and a GSA profile as supplied and validated by AMD. And looking at the VRM solution, including the cooling on this motherboard, yeah, we're not gonna have to worry about downclocking on the motherboard side of things, that's for sure. We've enhanced our CPU testing setup to include an AMD Radeon RX 6950 XT graphics card for pixel pushing power. We specifically chose the 6950 XT thanks to its superb performance at 1080p and 1440p resolutions, the former of which is critical for assessing CPU gaming capabilities. And our specific board of choice is the monstrously large and tremendously well-cooled Sapphire Nitro Plus Pure model. We've also enhanced the power supply setup 
with Seasonic's new 1600 watt Prime models delivering clean and consistent juice. And then rounding it out, all platforms get a 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler for cooling on their open air test bench. With regards to test procedures, it's the usual process we deploy for CPU testing. So if you want more details about the procedures, the hardware, the setup, the settings we use in games, etc., then do head on over to the Kikru main webpage where you'll find that information. Let's jump into the test data. Looking at power consumption, it doesn't make for particularly pretty reading with all of the modern Core i9 and Ryzen 9 CPUs. 194 watts package, which was just under 300 watts wall, for the 24 thread Ryzen 9 7900X is a hefty draw. It is, however, lower than the Core i7 13700K and the Core i9 13900K in their auto running modes, and it does allow AMD Zen 4 cores to run at 5.1 GHz average. High power draw means high temperature levels too. The 7900X isn't as bad as expected here, with a load value just shy of 90 degrees Celsius under a 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler. You're going to need a burly cooler to handle the 194 watts package power of Ryzen 9 7900X, but even then, temperatures will still be high, as is the nature of Ryzen 7000 with AMD's Precision Boost 2 algorithm. Of course, you can control this in the UEFI if you really want to. Looking at Blender Classroom, Performance from the Ryzen 9 7900X is very strong. Intel's Core i7 and Core i9 competitors are tough to ignore though, particularly with the much cheaper but very power hungry 13700K almost matching AMD's 24 thread processor. Cinebench multi threaded testing actually sees the Core i7 13700K outgun in the Ryzen 9 7900X. That's not a good showing from AMD. Yes, the Intel chip commands more energy, but it also costs £90 less. Single threaded performance on Zen 4 is outstanding though, and the Ryzen 9 7900X is no different here. We see a Cinebench 1T score that is only comfortably beaten by the high clocked Core i9s and AMD's own Ryzen 9 7950X. Handbrake H264 sees the stock Ryzen 9 7900X sitting just between the high power and more sensibly powered Core i7 13700K configurations. Once again, this isn't a great result for AMD as the Intel chip is £90 cheaper. H.265 performance is an area where AMD dominates though. This time, we see the 24 thread Ryzen 9 matching performance from Intel's hefty Core i9-13900K in a high power form. 7-zip does very well on AMD Zen 4 architecture too. We see the 7900X once again opening up a performance lead over the Intel Core i7-13700K. If you're interested in 3D Mark numbers, the Ryzen 9 7900X is a bit quicker than the 13700K for the CPU profile max thread score. Moving on to game and performance at 1080p, Borderlands 3 is solid on the Ryzen 9 7900X. AMD's chip puts in a good score that is very close to the chart top in pack. Far Cry 6 is not as strong, with the 7900X dropping down to 7700X performance levels. In this game, the Intel 13th gen chips are notably quicker, but it does seem that Far Cry 6 has a preference for Intel. Hitman 3 has the 7900X averaging similar to Intel's Core i7-13700K, but Team Blue's processor is notably quicker on the 1% low FPS values. As Far Cry 6 likes Intel, Shadow of the Tomb Raider has a preference for AMD Zen. As such, the Ryzen 9 7900X is up with the chart top in pack of AMD's own 7950X, the 5800X 3D, and Intel's Core i9-13900K and i7-13700K. Gaming performance for the Ryzen 9 7900X varies from title to title as expected. Overall, the chip is clearly no slouch when it comes to FPS, and its competitiveness versus Intel is solid. AMD's Precision Boost 2 algorithm is excellent. It maintains lofty clock speeds and uh, lightly threaded workloads, so it still remains to be my favourite way to operate AMD processors, keeping that Precision Boost 2 algorithm running as it should be. Using Curve Optimizer also worked well and it delivered an almost 200 MHz boost to the all-core operating frequency for our Ryzen 9 7900X. CCD0 clocked in at 5.35 GHz under load and CCD1 measured in at 5.2 GHz. And this speed boost was all while the power draw and temperature remain tolerable, by Ryzen 7000 standards, that is. There's also the 88 watt PPT Eco mode that can be easily applied through AMD's Ryzen Master software. This cut clock speeds to around 4.35 GHz on CCD0 and 4.175 GHz on CCD1. And of course, temperature levels were also drastically reduced. 
you can manually tune for a 105 watt TDP or 142 watt PPT if you prefer. And that's what we did. This delivered a clock speed of around 5 gigahertz on CCD0 and 4.8 gigahertz on CCD1. Temperatures were also still very tolerable at sub 70 degrees Celsius under load. Overclocking via Curve Optimizer is a very sensible way to run AMD's Ryzen 9 7900X. You basically get a free performance uplift for no extra power consumption and temperatures of 91 degrees Celsius is still fine. The 142 watt PPT Eco mode is very strong too, with a reasonably small percentage of performance shed in favour of better efficiency. You also get the one click 88 watt PPT Eco mode via Ryzen Master if you prefer that because that could be useful to small form factor users with cooling constraints. Curve Optimizer Overclocked is my preference here, particularly when it helps the Ryzen 9 7900X just about fend off the high-powered Intel Core i7-13700K in these benchmarks. Looking at Cinebench performance per watt data, Ryzen 9 7900X really shines in its eco mode settings. Even under its stock or Curve Optimizer Overclocked modes, the 7900X does well. If you care about power efficiency, AMD's 24 thread contender looks like a solid option and that is particularly true if you're happy to rein in its power allocation while still maintaining strong performance. AMD's Ryzen 9 7900X processor is an interesting one to analyse because its £560 price point in the UK means that it doesn't really have a direct competitor from Intel. The Core i7-13700K is about £90 cheaper and the Core i9-13900K is about £90 more expensive. So there's no specific processor that this can really have a tussle with directly. Despite this, it's Intel's roughly £470 Core i7-13700K that presents a really tough headache for this 12-core AM5 chip. And that's because the 24-thread Intel processor is often just as fast in heavily multi-threaded tasks, performs well in games, and has just as good a platform when it comes to features and connectivity. Okay, perhaps that's oversimplifying a little bit, Scenes or AM5 is probably more feature rich when it comes to the mainstream platforms right now, but you can get Gen 5 and DDR5 on the Intel side of things too, even if AMD probably gives you more support for some uh, better Gen 5 capabilities. And then back on the point of that 13700K to 7900X comparison, there is the domain of power draw, and that's an area where AMD wins convincingly with its Ryzen 9 7900X versus the thirsty 13700K. Thermals though, they're seemingly high on all modern processors. That's just the way of the world in 2022, it seems. But AMD does have some options to control the levels for the Precision Boost 2 algorithm via the BIOS tweaks. So that is something to bear in mind and it's a hefty tick in the AMD side of things. I think, as is typically the case for processors, a lot of the decision on whether to buy this chip will reside on the features of the AM5 platform. Unlike AM4, where cheap B-series motherboards were well-equipped to handle high-end Ryzen chips, B650 is expensive. AMD has, however, promised support beyond 2025, so if you buy a good motherboard now, there's probably a strong likelihood you could upgrade to a new processor in two or three years. And that's something to bear in mind, given that the boards are really expensive right now. So yeah, that could be an influencing factor on your purchasing decision for the processor, because it fits into a platform after all. And AM5 motherboards, they are undeniably feature rich, and often even more so than their Intel counterparts. Personally, I don't think AMD's lack of DDR4 support for cheaping out on a motherboard is really a decisive factor when we're talking about £500 plus processors. I think being forced down the DDR5 route at this price point is probably fine. I know a lot of people will disagree with me in the comment section down below because you've got a DDR4 kit that you want to recycle, but I think if you have to buy a brand new board, probably makes sense to go DDR5 at this point, but yeah, let me know what you think. Overall, I think the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X is a solid processor. It delivers stellar performance, has a little bit of tuning headroom available, and works very well in eco mode. Intel's cheaper Core i7-13700K, that is a tough competitor though. And if you make the decision that the Ryzen 9 7900X is worth spending £90 extra versus that Core i7, you might also decide that the outstanding Core i9-13900K is worth another £90 extra again. And that is perhaps a tough position for the Ryzen 9 7900X to sit in. A good processor, no doubt, but Intel's competition above and below is undeniably tough. So, yeah, to be honest, probably a little bit of a price drop will help with the competitiveness here. Otherwise, Intel has sandwiched the Ryzen 9 7900X into a bit of a tough spot.
So I've been Luke Hill for Kit Group. Thank you for watching this video review of the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X processor. As always, let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Really interested to hear what you think about this chip. If you like this video, do all the usual YouTube stuff. So like, subscribe, support the channel. Check out the main written review on the Kikuru webpage. That really supports us massively. Buy a cool t-shirt. Check us out on Patreon, Discord, social media and the likes. And I will see you in the next one.